mai kala hiki i kumukahi a kala velo i lehua. Aloha kako. My name is Jacob Hakim. I'm a PhD student at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. And today I'm presenting about building better relationships through efforts to share reliable information about COVID-19 in Indonesia as part of the Viral Languages Project. Viral Languages is a project that is sponsored by the CPA CPAAM CAM project, which stands for the Key Pluridisciplinary Advances on African Multilingualism in Cameroon Project, the SOAS World Language Institute, the Community for Global Health Equity, and the University of Hawaii Manoa Department of Linguistics. Um, Viral Languages is directed by Dr. Drs. Pier Paolo Di Carlo, Jeff Good, and Mandana Seifedinipur. Viral Languages is a project that is a collaborative effort between linguists, public health specialists, and community leaders to create and disseminate relevant, culturally appropriate, and reliable information about the COVID-19 pandemic in minoritized languages in different areas of the world. The goal is community-oriented creation of reliable and memorable media about COVID-19 for as many people as possible. So to this end, the directors and the creators of viral languages recognize that people trust information when it comes through the right channels, when it's in the right language through the right medium. So viral languages is designed to help communities create media, usually in the form of short videos and audio recordings that are in minority languages that people can access. Viral Languages Indonesia is one branch of the Viral Languages project. Um, the Viral Languages Indonesia team functions basically independently within the Viral Languages project with a focus on communities in Indonesia. The Viral Languages Indonesia team is led by linguists in Indonesia and the United States, including the authors on this presentation. Viral Languages Indonesia is built upon the foundation of the Viral Languages project which means that it's built on the resources, methods, workflow, and distribution channels of viral languages, but they've all been modified and tailored to work toward creating media for Indonesian communities. The goals of Viral Languages Indonesia in particular are to provide support to communities and help spread accurate information on COVID-19 in their own local languages. So the goal is to provide information where there is an absence of reliable information or to provide reliable information and stop the spread of misinformation, which has been widespread since the outbreak of this virus. Also, Viral Languages Indonesia is designed to promote inclusivity through the public health messages, especially for minoritized communities, including deaf communities. Viral Languages Indonesia, which came out of viral languages, had to modify and translate the foundational resources from viral, lang viral languages, which include the reference text, which is the core of the viral languages materials. It's basically a summary of the most critical information about COVID-19, preventing the spread and infection of the virus, and general health and safety pra practices that are based on reliable information and evidence. In addition to the reference text, there are the recording guidelines, which help people in different communities make the best quality recordings they can with limited supplies or um, equipment, and then basic information about the Viral Languages project. So the website or descriptions of the project or the people running the project were all translated into Indonesian to be accessible by people and communities in Indonesia. The general methodology and workflow of the Viral Languages Indonesia project starts with the language team coordinators who are the linguists, people that are coordinating the different projects who are part of the organizing force of viral languages. These coordinators reach out through their various networks to speakers of local languages in different regions of Indonesia. Those speakers operate as language team leaders. They are the leaders of the local language team in that community. They manage the project on the local side and help find speakers who are well-known members of the community, judges who can help make sure the quality and accuracy of the information is correct, and other people who help with the project. The language team leaders find, like I said, a speaker 
who is a widely known member of the community, and they are the ones who appear in the video or audio recording that is disseminated uh, containing the information of COVID-19. So this workflow comes from the coordinators all the way to the speaker, and there are checks along the way, including quizzes and uh, communication back and forth between different members of the teams to make sure that all the information in the reference text and the recording guidelines is understood so that the quality of the recordings is at a certain standard that can be disseminated later by the viral languages team on Facebook, YouTube, and archive.org. Now I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Yanti to discuss the outcomes of this project. Hello everyone, my name is Yanti. I'm currently teaching at Atmajaya Catholic University of Indonesia in Jakarta. I will now continue to talk about the outcomes of our project. We have produced 16 videos in 12 languages across the archipelago. 11 of these languages are spoken and one sign language that is Bisindo or Bahasa Isyarat Indonesia for Indonesian deaf community. This map shows the location of these languages. We have so far had more than 17,000 views on Facebook and more than 1,000 views on YouTube. Who actually helped us in producing these videos? We have a total of 28 volunteers who have different professions, doctor, midwife, professors, school teachers, and students. They are our, mostly our professional contacts in the, in, in the country. I will now show a couple of videos uh, with you. The first one is a video from Sumba Timur. Sumba Timur is a language spoken by 240,000 people in east part of Sumba Island, East Nusa Tenggara. The team is led by Christian Bani, and the speaker, Bara Lady, is a midwife in East Sumba. They managed to produce five videos discussing different aspects of COVID-19 symptoms, risk factors, and prevention. Let us now watch part of this video. Shalom. Salam sejahtera. Assalamualaikum. Om Swastiastu. Perkenalkan Natanggonyoba Ibu Baraledi Veli Veli Lesumba Timur. Nyunga no ramang la umah ibu sebagai bidan. No papani nyunga no duman penyakit corona. Penyakit corona, penyakit yang uh, haling kita dulu pemahat dan tahu sangat berbahaya. Jadi ni nunggu apa apa ramang dan nunggu mana nunggu penyakit nunggu apa terhindar apa benda, ambil lu hukar tidak di kolej umma. Bahana limun tonya hapu, tonya masker, apa apa yang nama tam, na urung dan ngarung, ambil lu hukar ini la umma, tidak di, jago benda nalu. Okay. The next video I would like to share show you is a video it Bisindo. The signer is Rika Apria Hermansia. She is a teacher at a school for deaf children in Jakarta. Bisindo or Bahasa Isyarat Indonesia is a sign language used by around 900,000 deaf signers across Indonesia. Let us now see the, um, this video.
Okay. Now let me continue my presentation. After the videos were shared on Facebook, we also shared them to our volunteers and asked them to share the videos to more people, especially those coming from the related community. A couple of weeks ago, we asked them about how helpful the videos were. One of the team leader, Darius, responded that they were extremely beneficial for, Adon for the Adonara community in East Nusa Tenggara. Um, as you can see here, he said that um, when I went to my village, I met an Adonara person. He knew me from Facebook and while watching the video I shared, he showed the video to other older people in the village so they could understand more about the pandemic and also know how to prevent spread. The same thing was conveyed by one of the, my friends who understood the Adonara language when I showed the video. Hi, I'm Ikanur Hayani, and I'm going to continue with challenges and unintended outcomes. I will start first with the challenges. One of the main challenges is the volunteers. Some volunteers were plagued by business and found it difficult to commit. Hence, they agreed to volunteer, but they never produced any video. They also canceled or postponed when making the recording. You can see one of the examples here in the comment of one of the team leaders. The challenges are, for example, when there's an appointment to meet and record a video, they cancel it or someone doesn't want to record because they're busy. So I keep looking for new people who use the language or I'm trying to find someone else in a different language. Other challenges are technical challenges such as the process of the recording. Recordings were not always easy to produce and issues such as nervousness or background noise or poor framing were common. We can see one of the examples here in the comment made by one of the team leaders. The video had to be shot several times because the speaker was nervous. I will now speak about the unintended outcomes. One of them is the raise awareness of the importance of local language or in Indonesian Bahasa Daerah for local schools, universities in Indonesia and in the US. One of the examples is the speaker of the video of Makassaris or Bahasa Makassar spoken in Sulawesi. She presented the video to high school teachers of Bahasa Makassar as an example on how to make learning materials in local languages. She also played the videos to students of the University of Hassanudi in Sulawesi, and they thought that the video is very useful to learn Bahasa Makassar. Uh, Here is uh, her exact words. Yes, I shared it using WhatsApp and Facebook. I also presented this video at a workshop for local language teachers at the high school level in Makassar when I was a speaker as an example of how to make regional language learning materials by making videos like this in target language. I also played a video to students of Makassar Bugis regional literature at FIB UNHAS as a lesson um, that they could respond to. According to them, this video provides inspiration for regional language learning, especially Makassar listening skills. Thank you. Thank you, Ika. Uh, in this part of the presentation, uh, we're going to reflect a little bit on the relationships um, that have made viral languages in Indonesia possible. 
Um, so we found that existing relation relationships were critical to the success of uh, of our project. So all uh, the videos were that we produced were the result of an existing relationship with one of the members of viral languages. So these were existing relationships among students and faculty within a within a single department. Um, these were also existing relationships through networks uh, among linguists in Indonesia. And, and finally, these were relationships that were also formed through uh, collaboration uh, in in linguistic research uh, that have kind of resulted in this nationwide uh, network involving uh, distant communities and people from uh, diverse backgrounds within Indonesia. Um, so this kind of contrasts with uh, our other efforts uh, to recruit uh, people to uh, communities to make videos. So we found that uh, outreach on on Facebook or announcements at conferences really didn't lead to any outcome. So we had no videos that were the result of any of these outreach sorts of efforts or these kind of mass um, emails or anything like that. Uh, we also found that invitations that were personal as opposed to professional contacts or even uh, one of our professional contacts uh, contacting uh, somebody uh, uh, who is personal we also found that this wasn't very successful either. So only one of these uh, resulted from kind of a personal contact. So we, we really found that professional contacts were uh, most effective. Uh, so this was students, colleagues, other linguists within uh, the professional, uh, within our professional networks. And one thing that became uh, extremely apparent uh, throughout this project, since this project involves both um, linguists from the US, um, including myself and PhD students uh, from the US, as well as uh, as well as Indonesian linguists, is that the, the foreign uh, linguists, the linguists from the US, uh, generally have relatively small uh, networks in Indonesia. Whereas um, the Indonesian linguists working on this project have much broader uh, networks, which is uh, not all that surprising, but it kind of revealed uh, this sort of bottleneck in communication uh, because the foreign linguists would kind of have to, would have to work through the Indonesian linguists to to reach this uh, broader community, and so um, it it would be uh, much better for uh, foreign linguists and Indonesian linguists to kind of build a network, um, a, a broader network uh, uh, with each other. And so we kind of see that a single uh, network where foreign linguists and the broader Indonesian linguistics community uh, could help loosen this bottleneck and improve the quality and quantity of relationships and number of collaborations uh, that were happening uh, within Indonesia. And so, um, we see that that such a network would be would be extremely helpful for for research purposes and building even capacity for language documentation uh, work happening in Indonesia. But uh, these relationships can also result in uh, important collaborations outside of linguistics. So we saw how these relationships were really in, uh, instrumental in uh, the successes that we did have in viral languages, Indonesia. Um, and we, we believe that this could open up new avenues of collaboration uh, with language teachers, doctors, and nurses as well. And for viral languages, Indonesia in particular, we see the, the need to uh, foster important relationships with, with others such as uh, public health, health specialists uh, in Indonesia. So um, in conclusion, uh, I'll just summarize that Viral Languages Indonesia is a collaborative volunteer run project that provides support to communities so that they can spread uh, accurate information on, uh, on the pandemic in their own language. Uh, we helped produce uh, 14 videos from various locations throughout the archipelago. And we faced several challenges in recruiting members of the community and keeping members interest uh, in the project. The project also shows the potential 
and the need for a broader uh, network among foreign linguists, Indonesian linguists, and others such as public health specialists, uh, local language teachers, and others um, to, to make these efforts uh, more impactful. And so as we look to future uh, opportunities, as we're you know, entering a new phase of the pandemic, uh, we see obviously many opportunities, especially uh, when it comes to re um, in uh, spreading reliable information about vaccines. And so uh, we ask if this is a topic that's interest of you, or if you have any um, feedback for us on this, please do reach out to one of us. Thank you.